I'm up in Vancouver, Canada, spring break, capital of the world, and I'm at Pantheon Designs. Now, you've seen Pantheon Designs before on the show. They have the HS3, an extraordinary 3D printer. Is it heavy? It's not too bad, yeah. Didn't even skip a beat. In fact, during the holiday live stream, they gave one away, and I promised the winner I would build it. Vincent C. You've won yourself the HS3 Mark II from Pantheon Design. And guess what? It's time to build it. For the HS3, we start with the top plate. Now, this is 20 millimeter 6061 T6 aluminum milled from a single part. When we talk about the precision of a machine, being able to get that done can be costly when it comes to a, a large assembly, but what they've done here is baked the precision and calibration into a single part. The first steps in install require wearing some gloves because parts come pre-lubricated, cleaning where the Y rail goes. That involves acetone, and it's always best if you don't get that on your hands. And I'm just gonna make a, ooh, God, that is a machine surface right there. That is smooth. It's weird, I checked this, kind of like I wanted to look at the dirt it picked up, but there, there is no dirt. It's just a nice, clean, machined channel for the Y rail. This is one of the Y rails, there are two. Look at this, I don't know if you can see it, there's a line on this side and that's the precision side. And we're matching the line and this side with the nice machine side in this aluminum plate. <laughs> when installing these screws, they're all fitted with some blue Loctite to keep them in place and I've got a nice electric screwdriver here to drive them in. You want it to be nice and firm and not bowed, and that's what we're gonna do. The next step isn't to move to the next one. We actually have to index the Y rail, and it's kind of like putting a flat face up against a flat face. We've got the side of the rail with that line that we talked about, and we have that nice machine side. So now what we can do is add pins and screws to push it together and have the facing sides as close as possible, and we call that indexing the rail. This is really an important step when building something that's going to be in service for hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of hours because you have a single aluminum plate and then you have everything torqued down to a specification so you can guarantee performance and precision over time. Now we're cooking with gas. With both Y rails installed, the next step is to install the Y blocks. Now this is where the ball nuts, the bearings, and the X axis attach to. They're pretty important, so it's important we get these on correctly. The set screw for both Y blocks is installed, and now we have to drop some screws down from above in order to hold everything in place. We've completed a few steps and honestly, I'm, I'm sort of just in wonderland here because anytime I've assembled a 3D printer before, it hasn't been to this level of precision. I found out that the bearings and the screws for the HS3 are over spec and Pantheon did that because they want to ensure that it's reliable for decades. At this point, we have to put in the ball screw retaining nut, and there's a little bit of a process. Uh, first, we take a collar and we put it on the end of this ball screw, and then we put the ball screw and we put it right into ah, perfect fit. The second collar goes on from this side. Once that's in place, this is the nut that holds it all together, and we put that in, and for now, we just do it hand, hand tight. With this side installed, we have to install the floating side. This is the fixed side, this is the floating side. That way, if the ball screw ever changes dimension because of temperature, the floating side can adjust for that. And for that, there's a block, a bearing, and a clip. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna take the bearing and put it on right, y'all. 
Tightening the nut on the fixed end of the ball screw requires a special tool. You tighten this around <laughs> the, the ball screw and then you somehow fit this giant wrench in and then you just tighten and let's see how I go. I slid this tool on and now what I have to do is use the, the hex key to tighten it up and I'm supposed to really kind of put some stank on it. What I notice is this doesn't spin when I go to tighten so we know that it's tight enough because now instead of this spinning, this is slipping on the ball screw and that's what we want. So we know that the side is nice and tight. <sighs> Got it. It's really cool once you've torqued everything into place and tightened things down, how well it operates. Now it's time for this. This is the X axis. And to put it on, you, you set it between the two blocks you put a set screw on this side to square everything up, and then there's a total of seven screws holding it all down. Only one set screw is needed, and you'll actually, as this tightens up, see this move into place and be square within the system. It's neat seeing this. I mean, I've built machines. I know lots of people that have built machines, but this is just another caliber. <laughs> this is crazy. With the x-axis installed, now we actually get to torque down the mounts. And to do that, we're gonna move the x-axis up closer, right up top, and then we're gonna verify that the ball screws aren't turning, which they aren't. So now I've got the torque wrench ready to go, and I can get these down one by one. It's really funny. When you think about a 3D printer that you and me have in our garage or in our studio or at our school or our maker space, and we, we have a, a Y axis and we have an X axis. You think about it, usually you, know, you, you try to straighten things up, you, you, you try to square it up. This though, this as you've seen, is a completely new level. With the motion system in place, it's really cool to see the guarantees that Pantheon has built in for alignment because when we talk about a machine running 24 seven, we want something that's going to be robust for weeks, years, maybe even decades. And the alignment features built in here guarantee it's not gonna drift or go out of alignment. I did also find out that the bearings, the guides, and the ball screws can be easily replaced. So if there's some problem that happens, you can replace one of those things and not worry about drift or alignment and keep the precision in place. Just look at this, look at this. This is a Y motor, this is going in next. Go look at your 3D printer at home. Hold the motor in your hand. Now look at this. When typically you're using like a, a NEMA 17 motor and you, know, you, can, you can hold that in your hand, you can play catch with it. This, if I throw it at you, it's gonna leave a dent. Let's put the coupler in first. That's a really good idea. Tightening couplers with a torque driver. Oh, look at that. Next step in the process are the Z shafts. Uh, if you're watching this, uh, and in the lower 48, or Alaska or Hawaii, they're the Z shafts. But here in Canada, they are the Z shafts. Zed's dead, baby. And Pantheon has found a unique way to attach these to this 6061 T6 aluminum plate, and they glue them into place. Pantheon has tried pressing, bolting, pinning, and gluing. And I kid you not, gluing is the best way to do this because once the adhesive sets, it acts as if these and this are one piece of metal. And it uses Loctite 638, which is a retaining compound with a working time of 60 seconds. I'm gonna put a bead. Oh my goodness. Okay, there's a bead. Okay, I'm making upward strokes. Oh, 60 seconds, great coverage. Now, I go in from the bottom, just like that. And then, I take this. And actually, there's a washer here that says, tighten to 60, uh, 60 inch pounds. Okay. We did it! There are four Z shafts. One's in, there's four in total. We gotta get the three done. This is just amazing. I can't believe I've never done this before. Let's get it done.
At this point in the process, it's time to drop the Zs. These are the Z motors and the Z ball screws, and they drop in from right here. Like, I'm not dropping them, I'm setting them in place. You don't drop things like this. You treat them with respect. Those who want respect, give respect. So we have to rotate this. Funny story from my days in After Effects. To rotate a footage element on screen, you hit the W key. And so once that was known, the user base and all the forums always referred to it as Wotate. That's for you guys. These are the ball nuts for Zed. And this is a little jig to put them on. So there are little tiny balls inside the ball nuts. And if you lose a ball, you're screwed. So you have to be really careful. You put this on top and then you slowly bring it down. Look at that. I didn't lose anything. This is lovingly known as the spider play. And it has some alignment holes, which I will align. And then it fits over the Z shafts and the two Z ball screws. So it's these holes here, I align with there. That holds the whole build plate. Every step of the process for this machine is, is insanely more overbuilt than anything I've assembled before. Well, at this point in the build process, we've done a 180 and then we did another 180. We have the Z axis in place. There's still a heat bed and some things to get on, but uh, th this motion system is nearly complete and it still boggles my mind to see everything based off of one precision milled piece of metal. We're almost to the finish line, almost. The next part in our journey of building the HS3 are these, what are called press in nuts. And they're gonna hold the set screw for the heated build plate. I was told to put this in, put this on top, take this from the underside, and then grab this torque wrench and torque the wheelies out of it. Nice and, nice and tight. And now at the top, we take this torque wrench and we, we go to town. <gasps> oh, oh, it clicked, it clicked. The four Z guides are actually just attached to the top frame. And in fact, this whole patent pending floating frame design is almost like the hardware version of Clipper's input shaping. It allows for faster accelerations and print speeds without ringing. And this is true for especially small features that need to be repeated many times. You know, when you think about it, software solutions such as Clipper's input shaping are like wearing noise canceling headphones, but hardware solutions are like going and finding a quieter spot. Next step, like I told you, is putting on the bed and we get to use these. So in the States, we have one, two, three blocks, which are one inch by two inch by three inches. In fact, Builder Rand at Punch Props talks about it all the time. These are metric versions. These are 25, 50, 75 millimeter blocks. I love Canada. They're gonna go on the thing that holds the bed, that, uh, right there, the spider plate. And then the bed is gonna rest on these and then we're gonna put the, the uh, screws into place and then the bed will be attached. The Canadian one, two, three blocks are just to keep the bed above the spider plate, but at a certain level. And then these have to contact the bed on the bottom, but not on the heater plate, just on the metal part. Got it. I'm lined up. I love a little attention to detail because the caps on either side of the spring to keep the bolt from wandering are 3D printed. Hello. <laughs> Whistle while you work. At this point in the process, we have to add some more parts and they happen to be 3D printed. 25% of the bill of materials of the HS3 is 3D printed. And in fact, Pantheon has a farm of three HS3 machines that do all of the printing for the parts on the machine. The materials that they're using on the farm for all of the prints on the HS3 is carbon fiber nylon and carbon fiber PETG. The printed parts on this machine aren't a part of the motion system or the things that keep it stable. The 3D printed parts actually help support the motion system. As an example, these parts hold the cable chain. As I'm installing this piece, have a look at the print quality. 
It's extraordinary. I have to tell you, this is a joyous moment. I got all of the mechanical bits for the HS3 installed, torqued down, and done. Next up, wiring. No, I didn't wire this 3D printer. Pantheon Design obsesses over cable management. They did a fantastic job with it. Next up is the print head. This hot end is amazing. The hot parts are all steel. The extruder is aluminum. It's CAN bus connected back to the board and it'll send 100 watts of power to make this as hot as fast as it can. Now though, it's time to get it installed. Let's get it enclosed. <laughs> and with that, the HS3 is done. I built this. And Vincent, our winner from the holiday live stream, I'm not gonna steal the experience of removing all the coverings. Don't you worry about it. When you get this, you will get to slowly peel this off. I'm really excited that I got to do this and bring you along for the journey because it's so unique how this machine is made from the ground up and how all of the precision is built into that single aluminum plate. I find it fascinating. And well, you know what else is fascinating? We've hit the end of the episode. I'm really glad you came along for this journey. If you've made it this far, you are awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. Fight for a cause you believe in. Print all the things. And from Canada, high five, eh? <laughs>